ever since I did a get ready with me. I'm <laughs> I'm just trying to get myself together. I'm going to my sister's house today. Today is the day that I do her wall. Um, all morning since I woke up, I got started on some DIY things that I'm going to be doing for her um for her wall. And um my eyebrows are so jacked up. I'm not an expert, so don't even, I don't need to hear the comments. Do it this way. That's wrong. I'm not an expert, okay? Uh, and I'm kind of in a rush because I have a 45-minute drive to our house. And I want to stop at Michael's on the way, which is crazy on a Sunday, I know. But um, I got a request to do a video on how did I learn to trust again and fall in love after my unfortunate uh, relationship with the narcissist. Let me clean the camera lens, y'all. That's better. And the short answer is, it's a daily struggle. Here it is. I'm years out of that situation. And unfortunately, I don't... I know people say time heals all wounds, take time to heal. First of all, healing for you may be different than healing for me. You may heal in a year, two years, three years. Some people take a lifetime and they never get over things. And I hate when people put time limits. Oh, you should be over that by now. Or, uh, or are you over it that quick? It's different for everybody. Let's just say that. Um, and I didn't realize how much PSTD I had. Is it post-traumatic? Post PTSD? Yeah, I think it's PTSD. Post-traumatic stress that I had from that situation. Because there's certain things that just trigger you. There's certain memories that you just won't forget. And I also would like to start off and say, um... That you, what was I going to say? Oh, not everyone is a narcissist. And I'm seeing now that that term is every, every, anybody who do you wrong or does somebody wrong. Oh, she's a narcissist. He's a narcissist. Oh, he's so narcissistic. Let's be clear. Not everybody who is a scumbag, who's a cheater, who's a manipulator, who lies is a narcissist. And everybody is on that bandwagon now. If you go on YouTube, there's so many people talking about the subject. And I'm not saying that they don't have good intentions. But some people, I think it's just um, a money thing, okay? And it's wrong. It really is wrong. A.K.A., for example, Derek Jackson. Now he's talking about narcissists. Um, what relationship? Tell us about your relationship that makes you a relationship guru. I can't stand him. But anyway. I don't want to listen to anybody that has not been through it themselves, okay? You can't tell me nothing about uh, dealing with the narcissist if you have not experienced it yourself. And I just don't like the fact that it's so cliche now to call somebody a narcissist. And not everyone is a narcissist. So you, you need to understand that as well. But I didn't know who I was dealing with. I was in a relationship with him for three and a half years. And I say out of that three and a half years, we probably had a good six months, okay? And it goes in stages, okay? And I'll try to link some of the videos that helped me, okay? Um, there's one particular person in um, general, and that's ASCC Direct. Um, there's a Kim somebody. There's a couple of them, and I'll link a few videos to this video, and and they helped me understand what I was dealing with because I didn't know what I was dealing with. I, you know, narcissists, some of them have addictions, so he was a alcoholic, binge drinker, and I suspected drug use, but I couldn't really prove it, but it was told to me when I had a conversation with one of his son's mother that he used to be on heavy, heavy drugs. And that's what broke them up years ago. So um, 
I thought that that's what I was dealing with. And, you know, you feel sorry. I'm an empath. You feel sorry for people. You're a people pleaser. And, um, you know, um, you make excuses and stuff like that. But I'm going to tell you, no matter what you're dealing with or, or if you don't know what you're dealing with. <sighs> yes, love is hard work. But it shouldn't be painful. Okay, what I'm saying? It shouldn't be torture. You know, you shouldn't be abused, used, taken advantage of. It's not going to be perfect. Okay, that's something that you just need to know. There's no such thing as Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Perfect. Um, when two people love each other and they want to be with each other, they're going to do what it takes to put in that work. So how, the question was, how did you learn to trust again? Okay, after I separated from the narcissist, um, and I, I don't know if I started saying this when I said the relationship goes in stages. First, they love bomb you. Then they start to devalue you. And then it's the discard. Whether you discard them because you just can't take it no more. They discard you. The discard is coming. Okay. Um, when I met my husband, I wasn't looking. Okay. After I separated from the narcissist, I dated briefly you know had fun you know what i mean um but quickly realized that there's a lot of people who like to play games out there okay and um i just was over it i made up in my mind that i'm done i never really was single because i was married my first marriage lasted 19 years okay got married right out of high school had kids we lasted 19 years he was not a narcissist, but he was a manipulator, a liar, a cheater, but he definitely was not a narcissist, but we got together young. Okay. And out of that 19 year marriage, we had good times or so what I thought was good times because sometimes you settle and you don't realize you're settling. I really didn't know myself. I, I got, you know, right out of high school. I didn't have no real life experience. I didn't have relationship experience. So let's just chalk that up to that. Okay. Um, we're on peaceful terms now, but we really don't have no reason to have an interaction. My kids are adults. My oldest is 25. My youngest is 23. We have a mutual grandchild, but listen, my kids can have the relationship. He could see his grandson. I don't have to have anything to do with that. So, um, there's no ill feelings, you know, um, I don't hate him. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> I should have left your ass a long time ago, buddy. We shouldn't have made 19 years. But anyway, we're talking about the narcissist. So I had gave up. I was just like over it. I never really had that single life. I was ready to just do me. After the relationship with the narcissist ended, I went on a girl's trip. We went to Cancun. You know, I was ready to just do me and live life. Okay. So I had known Mr. Fuller from afar and it's just timing is just what it is. Yeah. We like ran in the same circles. Our kids went to school together. Um, at one point when I was separated in my marriage, I had an apartment right around the corner from his grandmother's house. Um, we were in the same town practically, you know, even though he, you know, was in the city and, you know, whatever, but we still ran the same circles and we had a mutual friend, uh, on Facebook, somebody who I grew up around, not closely, but my sisters, you know, she's older than me. So my sisters were more her age. Um, but I still knew of her and, and over the years again, same circles. Okay. So he must've seen me on her Facebook page or something I'm thinking. And he had sent me a Facebook friend request. So before we even actually got together. We were friends on Facebook for like four or five years. And I would see his post and he would see mine. You know, he would like my post. I don't know if I liked his. I don't remember. Um, but I wasn't looking at him that way. You understand what I'm saying? Because I was into other things, you know, when somebody has my attention, they have my attention, even if they don't deserve my attention, you know, which was the case with, uh, the narc. Um, and if he would have approached me then, I was so 
involved with the narc that I didn't want nobody really but him. You know what I mean? And I probably would have messed up. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. So it happened when it happened. But anyway, one day I was working night shift. Okay. I had picked up some extra shifts because I was getting ready to take my mother on a cruise. And also I had another girl's trip planned. Again, I was, I was ready to live life. My kids were grown. I was ready to do me. And I had made a post on Instagram or whatever. And he had messaged me and we started talking. He messaged me with some BS. Because I had seen him like right before he messaged me. You know, I would wake up to all of these notifications of him liking all of my pictures. So, you know, that's usually what a guy does when they want to get your attention or a man. You know what I mean? But I didn't pay that no mind. Because if you want to talk to me, talk to me. Okay? I, I'm not taking no... Uh, we're not doing no subliminal... Um, BS. Okay. If you, if you want to talk to me, you talk to me. I'm not, I'm not going to feed into those subliminal messages. Like, Oh, I see you like my pic. No, I'm not going to make it that easy for you. So he did message me and we started talking. He asked me about my girl's trip to Mexico and you know, he was saying he wanted to go away and, um, I don't know, it came up about single, whatever relationship status or whatever came up in the conversation. And I thought he was with somebody else because I had seen him out with his, um, that's how close we was. I seen him out. I went out for drinks and I seen him, you know, with his then girlfriend and I didn't pay no mind. He didn't pay me no mind. You know what I mean? Well, he was peeking. I don't care what he says. He was peeking. But anyway, didn't pay no mind, you know, whatever. So once we found out we both were single now, you know, cause I thought he was still with her. He thought I was still with the narc. Um, because he's seen pictures on my Facebook posts and whatever like that. Once we found out we were single, um, he asked me out on a date. Well, we exchanged numbers and then, um, we met for coffee, you know, just, and I was over it. I didn't care. I didn't care if it worked. It didn't work. I, I didn't care. I went to meet him with coffee and I remember sitting at a light and I was saying to myself, I'm so sick of these dates. You know, you meet somebody, you have good conversation. They seem normal and they're crazy as hell. I just was sick of it. I was sick of it. So, um, we met for coffee and everything like that. And I couldn't really read him. He was very hard to read initially. You know what I mean? But after coffee, he, he you know, while we were drinking coffee, he kept asking me, are you hungry? Do you want something to eat? But you know, I was trying to be cute or whatever. No, I'm good. I'm good. And he said, well, do you want to see a movie or whatever? So we went to see Girls Trip. Remember Girls Trip? And then after the movie, we went and we talked for hours. And I've seen him every day since then. Okay? That's how, how it started. But like I said, I just was enjoying being wined and dined. He seemed very nice, very sweet. Um, he seemed normal and he wasn't trying to get me in bed. That was a big thing. Okay? He wasn't trying to go there. And that's... Um, you know, we talked, we talked, we talked, we talked. And my husband is a talker, okay? We talked, we talked, we got to know each other. But still, I wasn't convinced. So to answer your question of how I learned to trust again, he had to prove himself to me. Because to be honest with you, I didn't believe nothing. He said, I almost, <laughs> oh, I have memories and stories. Uh, <laughs> I just, I didn't believe nothing he said. Oh, I gave that man hell. I gave that man hell because I didn't believe nothing he said. And he was just persistent. You know, when I would say, I don't believe you, blah, 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 da, da, da. When I'm bugging out or whatever like that, he just was persistent. You know what I mean? And very patient with me. And he still is very patient with me because I give this man a run for his money. Okay, I do. And I know it. But I can't help it because this is who I am now. Um... After you come out of a situation like that, it forever changes you because your trust is shattered. Not only your trust in other other people, your trust with yourself. Because how did I let this happen? How did I let it go on for so long? How did I, why did I think that was okay? Why would I allow somebody to treat me this way? The difference between the narcissist, in my opinion, and a, that just play a manipulate a liar is the narcissist is more mental. They mess with your mind. Um, they play a lot of games. They're not even who they say they are. You understand what I'm saying? You really don't know who you're dealing with because they play characters. They like, if you, if you do your research, they say they wear the mask 
And the first six months into my relationship, he had on a mask. That's why when you go into dates, don't tell everything. I, w us as women, we want to tell. Like I was telling everything. Oh, yeah, my ex-husband, he didn't provide. Uh, he was a cheater. Uh, he didn't clean. He didn't cook. So, of course, the narcissist comes in cooking full meals. He's cleaning. I mean, we're getting between the grout with a toothbrush, doing things I don't even do. I mean, it was like the perfect man getting paid on Friday, handing me half the check. I mean, he was Mr. He was perfect because they go by, you know, and, and I remember that first date, like I was being interrogated. You understand what I'm saying? They, they don't tell you nothing about them. They want to know everything about you. So they know which character they need to become. Okay. So you got to be careful when you're out there and you, even, even a, a regular man, that's not a narcissist. Don't go in there telling them, oh yes, this and that and that, because they will throw it up in your face. Time you want to ask a question and Mr. Fuller has done this because of your past, blah, blah, blah. No, it's because I want to know why blah, blah, blah. Don't bring my past up. So you got to be careful. It's no... It, you should be able to share, but just be careful what you share until you know that person because they will throw it up in your face and uh, use it against you. But I, it, it was a struggle. But how he won me over and won my heart was being consistent. That's something a narcissist can never be, okay? Because they can't keep up the charade for long. So for me, the first six months into my relationship with my husband, I was just waiting for the floor to fall from underneath me because that's what it's like after the love bombing. It's just, it's like, it's no warning. It's not like you have an argument or you say something or you did something. It's just all of a sudden things change out of nowhere. And for me, that time window was six months and the floor fell from underneath me and he never was the same person again. And then that's when all the BS started um, happening. So for me with my husband, I was just waiting for that to happen. Um, so, um, but with keeping his word, being consistent um, is how, how he won my heart. Okay. As far as the trust goes, it, it it still is a daily struggle because I feel like this and let's just take narcissists out of this situation because you got to remember I was in a marriage with somebody who was you know not faithful um inconsistent and all those other things as well we have to realize that you have you don't have control over another person they're going to do what they want to do now, if a person loves you, opportunities may arise, but if they truly loved you, that that would hold weight, okay? That, that would make the difference in the situation, okay? A narcissist can never love you. They don't even love themselves. They really have a low self-esteem. Um, it's just so much mental stuff that goes along with it. I mean, this video, I don't even have enough time to... <laughs> go into everything that you deal with when you're dealing with a narcissist. And that's why it upsets me when everybody's using that term differently. It's not the same being on, being cheated on by just, you know, a regular play is not the same as the games that the narcissist put you through. It's, it's a whole bunch of mind fuckery, excuse my language, but that's what it is. And, um, it's something that I'm sorry, I know they say time heals all wounds and you're healing. You do heal, but those scars are still there. And some of those scars, just like if you touch it, it's still sore. It's just not something I wish for anybody to go through, but it has changed me. Um, and I feel it's changed me for the better because I've, I'm stronger and certain things that I tolerated in the past, I won't tolerate and... Um, I don't know. I'm so guarded when it comes to myself. And, um, even my first husband, he had an issue with boundaries and pushing them and stuff like that. And me being the people pleaser, wanting to please and happy and stuff like that. I allowed things that I shouldn't have. And when you hear that saying, you teach people how to treat you, you really do. And what you allow is what will continue. So a lot of positive has come out of that because 
when somebody tries to, even my husband, because I felt like there were times, or especially initially, where I felt like boundaries were um, pushed. I am so guarded and protective of myself, I become a crazy person if I feel somebody's trying to take advantage of me. Okay? Because I just, it's just something that you don't want to go through again. It's something that you don't want to allow. And when people worry about, well, you have to forgive, you also have to forgive yourself because it's all, it's that question, like, how did I let this happen? Like, why would I let this happen? And that's where self-love and everything comes into play. Because if you really love yourself and narcissists, manipulators, liars, and users, they prey on people who have low, low self-esteem. Because how else will you, I mean, that's the only way I could, how else will you allow somebody to <laughs> do these things to you? You have no control over what they do. But if you allow it to continue, that's what you have the control over. You have no control over the incident happening, whether somebody's cheated on you, somebody lied to you, took advantage of you, used you. Okay, they did that. But once you know they're doing that, do you stay? Or do you go? That's where your power comes in. And if you stay, they're going to think, well, hey, I can do it. She ain't going nowhere. You understand? I got her. I got it like that. You know what I mean? And that was what was happening in my marriage and also with the narcissist. So when I feel Mr. Fuller is pushing boundaries or does something I don't like, I'm a crazy person because hell no. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going through the bullshit. You know what I mean? And, and he's nothing like them, but I'm just saying if I felt there was a situation where, you know, boundaries were being pushed because I was a doormat, you know, and I, it, it's hard to admit that it's really hard to admit that, you know, you allowed this, this to happen and, and to accept it that, you know, you do play a part and why would you want to play that part? You know, why would you want to play that part? So it's a, it's a daily thing because there are certain situations, you know, like the narcissist used to disappear to the city a lot, okay? And not come back for days, okay? So, you know, my husband's in the city. He gets his hair cut in the city. He used to work in the city. So there's been certain instances where, you know, you're like, oh God, I hope I'm not going to go. You know, it's just post-traumatic stress disorder, you know, and, and it, it doesn't even have to be anything that he did and he's not doing anything wrong. He's doing his same routine that he's done for years, years before he met me. But because of what I dealt with in the past, yeah, it's hard to trust again, but you just, you have to just realize you can't live with that constant fear. Is he going to do what he did? Is he going to do it? You can't live with that constant fear. You have to just know that if a person truly loves you, they'll have self-control, okay? And if a person truly loves you, they wouldn't do those things. A person tells you how they feel about you. I was always questioning how the narc really felt about me because his actions obviously didn't line up to the words. The words were there. But the actions wasn't. So I was, it was confusion to me. But I know now coming out of that, a person's actions tell you how they really feel about you. If a person loves you, they're not going to be doing this, 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 and this, and this, and that. You know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong. A person can love you and still hurt you. A person can love you and still disappoint you. Okay? That can happen. But it's not the same thing as somebody intentionally. When the narcissist gets with you, they, 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 they already know the plan. They already know that you're just another source of supply. They already know the same game. They already know how it's going to go. They already know how it's going to end. Okay? But they play that mind games. They future fake. Like my narc talked about marriage and even called me his wife. He even bought rings and stupid me I'm I'm walking around with a ring like I'm married and and of course in front of me when we go he got his ring on but trust me I seen a picture of him when he was with his son's mother that he sent me on the phone your ring ain't on okay so and I let that slide like oh well he probably had to take it off because she wouldn't let him see the baby if she thought excuses stop making excuses for people 
Stop making excuses for people that disrespect you. Stop making excuses for people who lie to you. I made excuses. Oh, he has a drinking problem. He was abused. He gave me the story. He was abused by his mother. He was molested by the babysitter. And I'm not taking away from people that have those issues. I'm not. But that does not give you the right to lie to me, cheat on me, use me, hurt me. Go get therapy. That's all I'm saying. And you can't, you, you love can't, you can't love somebody into men, good mental health. You can't love somebody. I mean, don't get me wrong. Somebody supporting you, somebody loving you. Yes. Yes. That does feel good. But what I'm trying to say is these people have issues that you can't fix. Okay. And you'll be done drive yourself crazy and, um, be on medication or something else trying to help them. You have to know when to move on and to let go. So I, I still deal with things. I, I, you know, even though I'm years out of it, I still deal with things. I would be lying to you if I said that I don't have certain flashbacks that bother me, a certain place. There's a Dollar Tree I like in Comac, not my favorite one. There's one down the road. That's next to a bowling alley. The last New Year's that we spent together, we went to a party at the bowling alley. And every time I go in that parking lot, I think about that. Even with my ex-husband, he ruined my 30th birthday. He was cheating on me at somebody at work. He was so cold and mean. And his 30th birthday, I rented a house in the Poconos for him. All of his friends was there. And he was supposed to do the same for my 30th, and he didn't. And that was so hurtful. When I think of my 30th birthday, it, it upsets me. So, doesn't mean... <laughs> I mean, you, you're still going to deal with things, but you just have to remember everybody is not the same. But if you see those red flags, you can't ignore them. You can't. Don't ignore the red flags. Okay, don't. Um, if something doesn't seem right, ask questions. And that's something that I was afraid to do with the narcissist. Because I asked him three questions once and three basic questions. He got up and left my house. And that was in the beginning. And I should have known right there. Well, you know what? If you couldn't answer those three basic questions, I wasn't asking you for your social security number. I wasn't asking you if you ever, you know, committed a crime. I, I mean, they were basic questions that you should be asking somebody who's laying in your bed. And he got up and left. And that should have been a sign. I could ask my husband anything. I could talk to him about anything. You know what I mean? So you have to know everybody's not the same. Don't ignore the red flags. And... Look at their actions, not their words. Because when somebody's trying to get with you, they have the gift of the gab. Even my husband. I never told him this. I'm telling y'all first. When I, that first text conversation when he, he, um, he texted me. Yeah, he was trying to give me some gifts of the gab. Okay. And I honestly, he, he didn't even know he was wasting his time because I didn't believe anything anyway. Um, that's where I was at initially. <laughs> I didn't believe anything anyway. But with him, it was his actions. And that's what helped me. That's what softened me up. And that's what made me receptive, you know, to to starting over and, you know, really taking him seriously. Because prior to that, I was just like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, you know, he took me out to eat, wine, dine, don't know, this other stuff, you know. <laughs> but other than that, I really didn't um, take him seriously. It took time because, you know, I was still in that mindset of that six. I had that six month time period in my head. And I just really, really didn't take him seriously. And then um, what happened next? What was I going to say after that? I get those brain fogs sometime, y'all. Yeah, I really wasn't taking him, I really wasn't taking him seriously, but he, like I said, with time and consistency, he, he got me. He really got me. Oh, our first date. When I was at, going to our first date, and I told you I was at the light, I was saying, I'm so sick of these first dates. I really, I'm over this. You know what I mean? And, because I got stuck at the light. So I drove in, the light changed, I drove in, I parked, and as I was walking to the back, he was sitting on the back patio. Um, as I was walking to the back, God spoke to me and said, you're walking into your future. But I was so shut down. I was like, yeah, okay. Didn't pay it no mind. And I ended up marrying him, you know? So, 
you know, it is possible. Even after my divorce, my first divorce, I never gave up on love and marriage. I knew I wanted to get married again. I just didn't know when. And if you would have told me I was going to marry my husband, you know, the guy on Facebook or whatever, I seen him out, I would have been like, I just didn't see it. I didn't look at him that way. I had tunnel vision. I really had tunnel vision. And not to say anything was wrong with him. I just, I just had tunnel vision. I never, I never would have thought that in a million years. And I'm sure he thought the same thing. Never. Never. I'm, I'm, I was just tunnel vision. I was just too focused on the wrong things. Okay. That's what I'll say. Too focused on the wrong things. But it definitely is possible. But you just have to, like I said, me, I got caught up in the words. And you can't listen to a person's words. Somebody saying, I love you, that's just words. But how do they treat you? And when somebody truly loves you, you'll know the difference. I didn't have those questions that I had. I didn't even have doubts when, you know, people are getting married. Is it, are we ready? Are we not ready? Um, is it the right thing? I already knew I could never marry the narcissist. And I ended up paying for my first divorce. So I wasn't trying to pay for a second one. So I already knew that. So when he talked about the marriage and stuff, I already knew it wasn't. Even though I wanted to get married again, I knew I knew it wasn't going to be him. And um, with my husband, I just didn't have those fears. I didn't have, you know, the cold feet or nothing like that. I, I didn't have that. And that's all I can tell you. But like I said, it, it was his, his consistency in action. And like I said, when somebody loves you, you will know it. You don't have to question it. You don't have to guess it. You don't have to wonder what his intentions or his plans are because you will know. You definitely will know. Um, I got to pick out some hair to wear on my head. And uh, I'm going to do this wall. I'm excited. So I hope I answered your question, girl. I hope I didn't make you more confused. But it, like I said, it's still a daily struggle. You know, like if he, if, if, if Mr. Fuller went to the city and I didn't hear from him for a couple of hours, the, the voice in the back head, well, I wonder what he's doing. You know, because you of the fuckery I dealt with before. You see what I'm saying? Um, but what I will say, whenever I had those thoughts or those things, then all of a sudden I would get a text or a phone call. He would call me and say, Hey babe, what's up? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. It's just, you're, you're scarred. And anybody who says that they're not after going through such a traumatic experience. And like I said, if you've really dealt with one, the mind games, the ghost light, gaslighting, oh, all the crap that goes along with a narcissist, you will definitely know it's not the same as what I went through in my first marriage. Even though similar stuff happened, it's not the same. I just can't, I can't explain it. And I like, that's what I'm saying. When I see people on Facebook and they're talking, I mean, on YouTube and they're talking about the subject and they never been through it, I don't want to I don't want to hear from you. Because you don't have a clue of what you're talking about. And there are people that are truly going through it, suffering. I still watch videos. Because it's not just the romantic relationship with the narcissist. It could be a child. It could be a parent. It could be a coworker. Um, it could be a friend. I had a female friend that now I know that's what she was. I just thought she was crazy. Same thing with the narc. I just thought they were a little off. And I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse since 2001. Yeah, 2001. Yes, you do a psych rotation, but they didn't talk about narcissism. They didn't talk about that. Now it's more talked about. And now it's out there. And there's a lot of resources out there for people who are dealing with it. But I didn't know what I was dealing with. I thought he was just an alcoholic, drug addict, and just crazy. You know, he was abused. You know, he had issues. And, you know, his relationship with his mom. They say how a man treats his mom. That's how he'll treat his woman. So I'm thinking it's all, you know, a whole bunch of mess. And I thought she had her issues too. But no, I even think Chunk's father, my son. You know, because somebody, they say some people can have narcissistic traits. But not, you know, or... um you know, tendencies, but not, you know, be a full blown one, but it's real. That's why I don't like, you know, if anybody's, you know, doing videos and, um, or just want to talk about it because it's a hot topic right now and they haven't really been through it. And you have people that are really going through it, hurting and looking up to you. I just think that's wrong. You know what I mean? If you're doing it for that reason, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, it is what it is. I hope I didn't confuse you girl. 
I really hope you didn't. But it's it's an ongoing, it still is a daily thing because there are certain things that the scars are still there. And I really didn't realize how much damage it really did to me, to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I really didn't realize how much damage it did to me. I really didn't realize until certain things come up, certain flashbacks. I'm, I'm telling you, it's still... It sticks with you for a while. And for some people, I, I, I read stories. Because like I said, I still watch videos. I read stories of people who are still going through it. And they've been at it for years. I, I read stories of people that are still in it. And they don't know how to get out. And I feel the worst for them. Because there is a way out. There is life after the narcissist. There is life. There is happiness. There's peace. You know what I mean? I look at pictures of me when I was with the narc. And I look at pictures of me now. I feel like a different person. I am a different person. And people credit all of that to my husband. Yes, he's a, a a part of it and he's, you know, but I was living in hell and a lot of people didn't know. You understand what I'm saying? I was literally living in hell. You didn't know from one day to the next what to expect. That's why when people label everybody a narcissist, no, everybody's not a narcissist. That's not true. Let me get some hair on my head, y'all. And to end this video, I'm going to say self-respect and self-love will help you avoid a lot of BS. Because when you respect yourself, when you love yourself, you're not going to allow anybody just to treat you in your kind of way. And you won't be afraid to say, you know what, I'll just be by myself. And that's the stage I was at when I first met my husband. I was prepared to be alone for however how long it took. I just was done done with being used, abused, or whatever. And you have to get to that point. And even now, no matter who you're with, you can't put them before yourself. And that's something that I always did. I always put myself last. Now, I put myself first. And it's not being selfish. Um, it's very necessary. Because you can't help nobody else if you're not taken care of, if you're not okay, how can you help somebody else? How can you love somebody else if you don't love yourself? So I hope this video answered your question, girl. But it is something that's going to stick with you. I don't know your situation, but it is something that's going to stick with you for a while, maybe for life. Um, but it doesn't mean that it consumes you, it controls you, and that you can't have happiness and you can't have peace. But it's just an experience that you'll never forget. And maybe that's a good thing. Because sometimes people in relationships... They go through drama, BS, and then they jump right back into another one. Like, you understand they go from relationship to relationship. It is possible to go from narc to narc to narc to narc if you don't work on yourself and make some changes. Fix those things that made you vulnerable or um, susceptible in the first place to be picked to be supply because they see you. They see right through you. They know your strengths, your weaknesses. They know if you have self-esteem issues, they know. And trust me, they will use it against you. They will use it against you. Okay, so um, that's about it. So any other questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'm headed to my sister's house. Michael's Craft Store, then my sister's house. Talk to you soon.